Hi there. So this video is going to be about a um, a jig that I've been making. This is a new style of turbine um, hub that I that I've been uh, making for the the uh, the turbine, the axial flux turbine that I've been working on. And I figured I'd show you how I make the hub, and thought you might find that interesting. <clears throat> so. Um, and I do have footage for for you on the new turbine. It's actually kind of exciting, so I I, I need to get a little bit more, a um, little bit more footage so I can give you a proper video on that. So that is coming up. So anyway, let, back to back to the, the 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 jig here. So this is this is what I call the blade jig. It is a particle board. I always forget what this stuff is called, but it's basically just what comes out of the bottom of a treadmill. That's what you're actually standing on and running on. Um, Seems like I have a little bit of treadmill and everything I build here because um, I do use a lot of scrap <clears throat> so It's very quick and easy to machine. What I do is I just uh, Draw it to circle figure out what size I need Jigsaw it out basically rough it out and then drill a half inch hole down the center um, of it find the center drill it out then uh, once I've got that half inch hole I take a half inch bolt right and I put it in the lathe I drill out a center on it and then uh, then I come over to this tool right here which is actually something I if you guys are interested in machining is very very important um, if I didn't have this I'd have to run right out and get another one immediately um, it's very very uh, probably one of the most used tools I have well it what, what you do is um, it's a wrong size collet there but that's a it's a half um, I would get a half inch collet and Put that all the way through, right, like that, and then that, then that bolt, then this collet can go down in there, and uh, and then the bolt can stick out the top. Let me bring this up a little bit here. Bolt will come out the top, and then I I can basically drop this uh, board down through that center hole, and then <clears throat> lock it down, crank it down, and then uh, what you do is, oops. You uh, you can basically change positions, and it's got 24 stations. And if you see here, I'll try and zoom in a little bit. I put little red marks, um, so I can see exactly where I'm going. But uh, that's that's 24. That's 24. Uh, that's for a 12. Um, 12 hole hub there it has 24 positions and it just locks it in I do have a rotary table and the rotary table is good but it is not nearly as fast uh, using as this thing so uh, just to, so you can see what you can do you can also put a uh, th uh, three jaw chuck in it like that right that goes on top there if you want it can be mounted uh, vertically or horizontally for other operations and um, <clears throat> you know it just mounts down to the the uh, uh, mill table there, and uh, what I do is I, once I got that sticking out, I take my my mill and I put a center drill in it and I put it right in the center. And I zero out my digital readout so I know where home is. <clears throat> then coming back over here, right, you could pretty much see what's going on here now. Um, I go ahead and you know measure out a certain distance and uh, all my blades all my steel banded blades are based on on half in whoop, there's no focus here on half inch increments all the way through so those are th these are an inch apart right and so when I make my jigs I use uh, you know those same dimensions so when I come over here to this thing it's it's based on the th same thing and I, I use jigs for everything. I, I think uh, for those of you guys who've uh, seen some of the other videos, I mean, t things like this I use frequently. Um, it always starts with making something like this, and that's just a uh, that's just a bar. And so you can put that up against the first one. See see how I marked my holes, made one, and uh, and then I drilled out the. I basically just like you would use a center punch. I I lock that down to there. I drill a hole through and just, I don't drill all the way through, I just drill enough so that I can bring it over to the drill press, which is faster than the mill, and I just drill out those holes, eighth inch, right? So I'm not drilling so much steel. I've got four of them so I know it's straight, 
and, uh, and that's how it's done. Now, uh, <clears throat> at this point, what I'll do is um, I will put a uh, number six bolt through these, go all the way around, not every single hole, probably just the two outer ones, right? Um, to hold it in there, tighten it down, and then hold that in place. And then I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, last one I just welded across here and then I put braces on the back and that, that was fine. I mean, I don't think that's a bit of a problem so long as you, uh, you get really good penetration with the welder um, going around there. And again, it gets smoking hot. That thing's gonna smoke and light, wanna light on fire. I ventilate well when I do this. And um, what I might do is just get a washer, bore that open. Um, <clears throat> I've got another example of that sitting around here somewhere, but I bore that open so that that will drop right down on top of that and then I will then I'll weld it directly to the washer right <clears throat> along along the one edge then I'll pull it out of the the jig and then weld it on the other side now I like to weld as much of possible in the jig so that it doesn't warp or anything but I can tweak it after that and then I'll probably still put the braces on the other side so anyway, that's that's how that that that's done, and I I, I like this technique, so so I wanted to share it with you as a, just a method of doing things. Now I realize you, you may not have all these tools, whatnot. Um, this is this has been my my major hobby for a long time, but there's other ways you can do this. And <clears throat> when you go to make jigs, um, you know you, you can you can use a protractor, a piece of paper, and um, and a ruler, and 3M um, spray adhesive and basically draw out a circle get your drill holes on either side all the way around with a piece of paper and then 3m spray adhesive put that paper down on that uh, on that piece of wood and just take it over and then drill those holes out you're gonna get the same thing right so you can make a jig you don't need all that fancy tooling or whatnot I just use it because I've got it but uh, you know as with anything else you can get a lot done with some simple tools so um, making making jigs now over here uh, so this is for my blades right <laughs> sorry uh, this is for my blades this is for the steel banded blades and uh, again I, I, I rant on about these things I love them um, they are that I, I know they're PVC and that that is really infuriating for a lot of folks but <clears throat> they they are very very durable um, there this is like a diving board okay um, that is roofing steel it's very thin and uh, it weighs very little. I mean, it, it weighs, I, I, the hub weighs far more than this. So it's almost like you're taking the weight of a normal hub and just bringing it into the center. So I think it can spin up a little bit faster. These are aluminum rivets, they're eighth inch, um, aluminum shaft, aluminum head, and, um, <clears throat> and they're hammered down a little bit. I've got a long video on this. I really need to do more videos on these blades because I like them. But enough about the blades. Um, I've got that, and this is made for those blades, but uh, uh, the Muddy Man sent me some uh, Raptor blades, and that's what this is going on here, because those have different dimensions. This was the first one I made, and I kind of muffed it up there, but uh, these three right here, that's, uh, those holes are based on the, the Raptor blades, except they're just, they're just the eighth inch starts. Um, I will drill that out to quarter inch, which is, uh, and I think they're 15 to 16 apart, so that's, that's the way that's going to happen right there. And this is going to be for the three Raptor blades. I may do that on a completely different turbine and use uh, <coughs> use these plates. I'm going to make an axial flux, a three-bladed Raptor axial flux. That's a project coming down the, the pike. Um, I got three plates here. So um, those are for the magnets, of course. But again, you see the index? I use that. Um, so now, now once you make something with an index, you can use this over and over again. You just get a half inch hole through it. Boom, you're, you're, you're making whatever else. But um, I thought I'd show you that. So sorry, I, I've kind of rambled on this. I, I try not to do that too much, but uh, but I, I, it's late and I thought I'd give you guys a video and show you this. So uh, keep keep watching. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a few more uploads happening here. And uh, I appreciate your comments and uh, all your, uh, all the interactions. So uh, and keep up the projects, um, keep up your own projects, I enjoy watching those, uh, all of you guys. So, uh, thank you very much, and until next time.